is undoubtedly what we tend to call right-wing populism. You know, whether we're talking about Putin, Trump, the Brexit, Viktor Orban in Hungary, this is a real challenge to transformative democracy. I'm not sure that right-wing populism is the right term, because in a sense, it's a peculiar mixture of what one might call crony capitalism. These people make lots of money from contracting out and privatization of government, uh, and at the same time, extremist, nationalist identity politics. And that's undoubtedly the big challenge. Of course, we need to oppose neoliberalism, to bring social justice, to tackle climate change, but they are the main obstacles to achieving that. I think the big problem today, and that's why people vote for these new right-wing populists, is that people feel a huge loss of trust in their institutions. They feel disempowered. And although we technically have democracies everywhere, in fact, people feel they don't have what I call substantive democracy. And what I mean by substantive democracy is being able to influence the decisions that affect your life. Uh, the Spanish indignados said, we have a vote, but not a voice. And I've been working in leave areas in Britain, and people just feel profoundly disempowered. But actually, they won't be re-empowered by, by being nationalists. They think that. In Britain, the slogan, take back control, is hugely important. But actually, not only are states highly centralized and undemocratic, the big problem is that the decisions that affect our lives, climate change, financial markets, multinational corporations, can no longer be controlled at national level. And so we need a transnational layer of governance in order to address those issues and to allow people to make decisions and be re-empowered at local levels. And that's how I understand cosmopolitan democracy. It's not simply democracy at an international level. It's a layering of democracy. It allows great more decisions to be taken at local levels because you control financial speculation, you tax multinational corporations, and you start a big program of addressing climate change. The problem is that the dominant ways of talking about history, social science, journalists, always tell history from above. And people don't understand how social struggles have played a key role in all the big changes in history. So most people have forgotten that the 1989 revolutions happened because there was a trans-European grassroots movement who really campaigned throughout the 80s for peace and human rights on the European continent. And interestingly enough, that generation were very often the children of the resistance, the European resistance during the Second World War. And during the Second World War, the European resistance was committed to a democratic socialist Europe. So understanding those previous generational struggles is not only important in understanding how change takes place, but it's also inspiring and also makes you feel you can make a difference by becoming an activist.